All right, welcome back to the series of videos from The Effect. Uh, so this is gonna be the only video on this particular chapter, chapter 11. It's also gonna be the video that closes out part one of the book. Uh, we'll be back soon uh, with part two of the book. So what this uh, video is about, what this chapter is about is what if all this stuff is just too darn hard, right? In this entire run up to the book, we've been talking about, okay, if you wanna get a causal effect, you need to think carefully about what your model is. You need to carefully draw out the causal diagram. You need to figure out all the pathways from X to Y. You need to be able to close them all down, make sure that you can actually measure all the things that you need to close down. Or you need to set up some sort of process whereby you can isolate just the front door paths. And that all sounds very difficult. And it's also all very dependent on us having a very good idea about what our causal diagram is. That's pretty hard. And it's, you don't have to look hard to find people who are pretty skeptical of the idea that you can actually model things out in this way with any sort of precision, right? Uh, you know, all the diagrams that I've shown you so far, I've pretty much pre prefaced with saying, hey, here's a diagram. Just assume that it's right for the minute. You can probably imagine some things that I've left off. Even in more complex diagrams, people are gonna disagree about what they should look like. And for a lot of social science applications, people might say, this just stuff is too difficult. It's too complex to be able to write down in a sort of a uh, nice compact diagram like this. Why would you even bother? Uh, in the minds of a lot of these people, the actual diagram tends to look a lot like this, uh, where you have a treatment, you wanna know the effect of treatment on the outcome, and between treatment and outcome, there's a back door that just goes through all sorts of stuff. There's just some sort of stuff there. I don't even know what all that stuff is. It's probably got 100 to 150, 1,000 variables in there, and there's no way that I could possibly ever measure and control for all of them. So. If you're a person who thinks like that, that you think this is just way too complex to actually use this process where we actually need to understand the whole data generating process, what can we do? Are we completely out of luck? Can we not use the whole field of causal inference? Can we have to, do we have to completely ignore the idea that we can get some sort of causal estimate? And I want to be clear, this is not a trivial uh, uh, objection, right? Things are in fact complex and we do have to simplify things in order to use this process of writing down a causal diagram and using it. Uh, and you could make the case that any sort of simplification like that is gonna be too simple. So what can we do in these cases? I'm gonna talk about four different things that we can do uh, in order to give ourselves a little bit of leeway when we think that things are just too complex to actually write down a full causal diagram. And the first one is this, and it is to focus just on the joint determinants of treatment and outcome. Maybe we don't think that we can write out the full complex causal diagram, but we can at least think very, very carefully about what variables we think are likely to be directly on a single backdoor path. And that is all the variables that cause the treatment and also cause the outcome. This does not require us to write out the full causal diagram. We maybe don't think about all the interactions between all the different individual variables, but we can think carefully about what we think just some simple backdoor paths are likely to be. Writing out a list of things that are likely to be confounders, that are likely to drive both treatment and outcome in the data without being a causal path, is a much easier task than writing out a full causal diagram. And honestly, it gets you most of the way there. You're gonna miss out on some stuff by doing this simple approach where you only care about those simple backdoor paths. You're not gonna catch all the collider variables, for example. Uh, you might get yourself in trouble with some post-treatment bias, but at the very least, you'll be thinking carefully about things you have to control for, even if you're not doing it the full proper way. So. The first way out of having to do a full causal diagram is to do a very simplified one where the only thing that you're looking at are the most obvious confounding variables that cause both the treatment and the outcome. And in fact, this is the way that a lot of researchers actually operate. They, instead of writing out a full causal diagram, they just think, what are my likely variables to be that simply cause the treatment and cause the outcome? I will have to deal with those. And if there's any that I can think of that I can't measure and control for, I gotta do something about that. That's, a, that's approach number one. Approach number two. Uh, is it's something that is done by a lot of other kinds of researchers, and that is to use those front door identifying methods that I talked about in the last video. There are a lot of researchers who will basically say, why bother drawing about and doing a big old causal diagram and finding all the pathways? Because there's no way that when I get to the end, I'm going to actually be able to use that process because there's gonna be something that I can't measure or something that I've forgotten about and left out. One way that you can get around this problem is by focusing on just isolating those front door paths instead of trying to close all the backdoor paths, and that's what those front door finding methods are for. There are plenty of researchers who think that you can only get a causal effect by doing a randomized controlled experiment. I think that's a bit harsh, but there are certainly people who think that. Uh, you, there are also plenty of researchers who think that you can only get a causal effect by either doing an experiment or isolating front door paths with some sort of exogenous 
variation. I also think that's a bit too strong, but that's a bit closer to my own view in terms of what is actually possible here. Uh, it's simply a lot easier to identify a causal effect if you have some source of exogenous variation that allows you to identify a front door path. Uh, it simply allows you to ignore a lot of stuff that's very hard to figure out if you aren't able to ignore it. So that's approach number two. Approach number three is to attempt to draw out some sort of causal diagram, recognize that it's going to be a simplified approach to doing so, and then test whether you got it too wrong or not, right? We mentioned in previous videos certain ways of being able to test causal diagrams. Uh, there are certain uh, uh, implied conditional independences on a causal diagram. So once you draw your causal diagram out, you might say, hey, you know, I know that I'm leaving something out. Humbly, I recognize that I do not have the full, complete picture of all the thousands of interlocking parts that should be here, but at least you can check whether you've made any huge egregious errors by doing placebo tests on your diagram. Your diagram should imply certain variables that are unrelated to each other. You can test, are those variables unrelated to each other? You might get lucky and, and, and get to a point where even though you know you've left something out, you don't think it's that important because you've passed your placebo tests. That's approach number three. Finally, approach number four, which I think this one is a little bit underutilized, and that is the idea of partial identification or sensitivity analysis, uh, where partial identification is a broader idea than just sensitivity analysis, but it is most commonly applied with sensitivity analysis. So what is partial identification? We've been talking about identifying causal effects, right? Uh, and when we do that, we say, okay, well, here are the things that we got to control for in order to get there. But what happens if we get to the end of that process and we say, oh, you know, there's some stuff that I needed to control for, but uh, I couldn't control for all of it. I did what I could, but there's some stuff left over. Well, partial identification says, you know, maybe you can stop there. Uh, because what, what are you really getting? You're saying, okay, I've got this estimate. Uh, I know that it's not all the way there, but I've done some of the work, right? And uh, what, what partial identification says, okay, we, there's still some parts that we can't control for. Let's make some assumptions. Let's make a range of assumptions about what we think might be plausible. Let's say that there's one variable that we've left out of our analysis that we know we need to control for, uh, but we haven't controlled. Let's say we're, we're regressing the income of the zip, the average income of the zip code that you grew up in, and there's a variable that we can't control for, and maybe it's your parents' intelligence or something like that, thing, right? We don't have that data on parents' intelligence, uh, but we know it's likely to be related to where you, and to, you grew up, and also probably likely to be related to your income as an adult. So what can we do? We can say, well, I couldn't control for it, but let's make some assumptions. What if I think that the relationship between your parents' income and uh, where you grew up is super, super strong, right? I'll make the worst assumption I possibly can, and then I'll make that assumption and I'll see if I assume that it's super, super strong, I can calculate out how bad I think my result is still gonna be biased, right? I'm leaving out some control variable. I know that's gonna bias my result in some direction uh, because the correlation I see in the data is not gonna represent just the causal effect but I can do some stuff to figure out how bad I think that bias is based on the assumption that I make about how bad I think the bias is, right? So I might say something like, okay, if it really is the case that the relationship there is super duper duper strong, then here is the estimate that I would get. And then I'll do it again. What if I make the assumption that the estimate's kind of weak? What, is, what estimate would I get then? And from that point, you have a range of assumptions you could be making from the relationship is super strong to the relationship is super weak and a range of resulting estimates. If I think the estimate's super strong, then the impact of where you live on your uh, adult earnings is this number. If I think it's super weak, it's this other number. And I think the answer is somewhere in this range in the middle. That is partial identification, because we've identified an answer, we just haven't limited that answer all the way to being a single value. Uh, and that is sort of partial identification and sensitivity analysis all sort of wrapped up into one. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about sensitivity analysis in the very last chapters of the book, uh, but that is the basic idea. And it is something that we can do if we think that we there's no way we can actually do the entire process of drawing up the causal diagram and identifying and closing all the backdoor paths. If we recognize there's some backdoor paths still left open, we can just ask, okay, we know we haven't gotten all the way there, but how far have we gotten? What can I say with how far we've gotten? And that is approach number four. So those are four things that we can do if we think that the task of actually drawing out a causal diagram and controlling for everything we need to is just not gonna happen realistically, which is not that unrealistic of a claim to make. All right, that is it for the part one of the book. Uh, we'll be back with part two. Uh, each of those chapters is probably gonna get a couple more videos. Those tend to be a little bit longer and more technical chapters, uh, but I hope that you will come along for the ride. Thank you. <laughs>